Duel Review is brought to you by Nexus, digitalcomics.com. On today's Duel Review, it's Hunted, the Demon's Forge. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Today is the 27th, and we're taking a look at the video game, Hunted the Demon's Forge. <laughs> That's right. It came out in 2011. Uh, it's developed by In Exile Entertainment, but published by Bethesda. Um, this one kind of, I don't know, there, it got a lot of bad press for whatever reason. Some people gave it uh, 3.5 out of 5. It was mostly out of mechanics. It, yeah. Uh, but we, we sat down, we played the co-op, and we enjoyed it. We had a lot yeah, of fun with it. Quite honestly, um, I originally bought this because my nephew was visiting and we were looking for two-player games, like you could do split screen. And there aren't a heck of a lot of them anymore. Yeah. So we, we looked up this, and it got a kind of muddled review. People were saying, oh, it could have been a great game, blah, blah, So I was like, you know what, screw it. And so I bought it because it looked interesting to me. And uh, we had some fun, and uh, but we didn't finish all of it. He was just there for a short visit. So it kind of got pushed aside and stayed in my, you know, library for a long time until recently I was like, you know what, I need to finish that game and, you know, since Nick and I, we have this new space, let's just play it and maybe we'll do, a, you know, a crap game like Game Lab if it's that bad, yeah. yada, 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 but we had so much fun playing this and, you know, yes, there are problems and we'll talk about them, but overall, I would love to see another one of these games. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed Polished. this game. It, uh, you could probably get it pretty cheap, so I would yeah, check it out, but it, anyway. It got, lot, it got poor reviews, uh, yeah. well... But, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, so the story. Let's talk about the story. The story follows two mercs, uh, two mercenaries, uh, Alara and Kadok, and he says his name differently every time. It's like, Kadiver, Kadoosh, Kadup. I don't know what. Kadok. Kadok. Yeah. So, Kotex. Kotex. <laughs> so you have, you follow these two characters as they're on the hunt for the mayor's daughter, who has been taken captive by. Oh, what is his name? An Anuvin. Anuvin. How do you say his name? So, Anuvin has been ta uh, uh, taking hostages, taking people away from their villages through war... 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 what is the, the little war goblin guard. thing. Wargar. Wargar, yes. So the Wargar and the Minotaurs and the dragons are there, and, and they're all following Anuvin for whatever reason, and you're trying to unravel this story while you go in search of the mayor's daughter. Um, and what's interesting is because they're mercs, they really don't care about saving the land at all. They don't. They don't want to. They just want to save the girl and get paid their money. Uh, but they are kind of taking advice, I guess you could say, from a dead woman named Seraphine. Seraphine, I think is her name. So she is kind of taking you along this this road. She's telling you what to do. You're following her reluctantly. You know, uh, uh, Alara's like, Kadok, what do you got? Like a crush on this girl? What are you doing? What the hell's wrong with you? And, and Kadok's like, look, I just want to get paid. How about you shut your mouth in, you know, no certain terms? He's, he's kind of a prick sometimes because he calls a girl all the time. That bothers me. Listen, girl, shut your mouth. Well, yeah, but he, she's older. she calls him old man. That's so. true. Yeah, there, they, there's an interplay. See, that's the thing is like you're talking about story and the story is kind of all just generic throwaways. Yes. Yeah. I don't really care. What's fun is this kind of like co-op feel that you have. You know, they rely on each other and they've only got each other, you know, going through these scary dungeons and having to deal with all these tough situations. And yes, the sound bites kind of repeat too much. You, yeah. know, you get the same thing too much. And Caddick especially has stupid things to say. He, he says that he's kind of a prick. Well, actually, he's kind of a Duke, you know, like Captain America type in a lot of ways. Yeah, I guess so. Because he's just kind of a goody two-shoes, and she's the one that's a little bit more. Although, maybe that had slightly to do with how we were playing, but yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, anyway, but he says stuff like, how do you have to kill to get a shield around here, like, all the time? So the first couple times, like, hey, that's funny. And every once in a while, there'll be something new, and so I, I enjoy that, and I do like the interaction. You have to... Uh, both be at a location and like cross a crevice or right. or you know crawl through a crag or whatever. And it's like, oh, you really needed me to do that. With yeah, you. you have to both show up and like hold hands as you do but it. But that, that's it's kind of how they engage feels. the checkpoint. And you but yeah, go the, back. that's right. That's how they say, okay, well, both of you have to agree to move on, and it works for the most part, except for like in the min menu system where, where you're oh, upgrading yeah. your guys, and whoever gets there first is the one that has to upgrade for both of you. Right. That Unless doesn't make you any back sense. all the way out and then go back in, and what sucks is if you back out, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, why can't I go in? Well, you actually have to move away from the area where it allows you to enter the menu. And, and then, then move run, back to but, it. Yeah, and there's a lot of little things like that that can get on your nerves, but it never robbed us of the fun. Yeah. Uh, it was just really fun. I mean, there is a lot of 
rinse and repeat, you know, same thing, but it was really enjoyable. Um, I had a lot of fun playing as her because she's an archer and she gets all these different uh, uh, arrow upgrades. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot of fun. He would be, you know, hacking and slashing up there way up in the front. A lot of times he'd go too far and then I'd get screwed and he'd have to come back and help me yeah, or, yeah. or whatever. So you do have to kind of know where each other are. But I, I would just like explode the people that he was trying oh, to yeah. kill. Oh yeah, I'm like mid-swing and they just erupt an explosion. Like, I'm like, dude, happened? you stole my kills. Yeah. So yeah. that was a lot of fun. Also, just the two of us, you know, the banter back and forth. And yes, you know, calling him like Kotex and whatever all the time, like... Yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it actually annoyed Kadok me when he, when he got his name wrong because I'm playing that character. I'm like, dude, it's Kadok, okay? His name is Kadok. Yeah, I he, don't get your name wrong, Elena. He, he let me play as Elena the whole time. Yeah, which... we, th that gives you an option. Um, you can switch. Part, it part ways through, yeah. In, in certain parts of the game, it gives you like this purple gem that lets you switch characters. And it's like, oh, suddenly I'm the girl. Oh, suddenly I'm the guy. Um, but we never did that. He liked being the archer female, and I liked being the kind of melee guy. And it just kind of worked. Yeah. So... so Again, before we get into all the little nitpicky things, I love this game. I really do. I, I Well, I, I solidly like it. Yes, I solidly like it too. <laughs> I wish there was another one, and I wish that a little bit more time would be put on it. Maybe a little better story. Um, but again, with if you have low expectations, which the reviews probably have given you low expectations, but you were thinking about buying this game... Check it out. Yeah, I think you it was might really it. like it. Yeah, especially if it's extremely cheap, and then you, it's like a win. Now, having said that, there were a few game-breaking bugs that we encountered, and then there were annoyances. So right. we'll continue with the annoyances. You know, the annoyances of the checkpoint system, the menu system. It should be noted that we played this on PlayStation Three, yes. so that may factor into it. It may it, there may be different glitches per. Um, per system, because it was also on Xbox 360 and Windows. Uh, another annoyance that I absolutely agree with uh, the critics not liking is that when you come across new weapons, a lot of times they're kind of useless to you. Yeah, it's you've like already got a really good a, weapon. A better weapon, or you're not always sure which weapon's better because they have like poison or enchantment or something like that, and they have a different number, and you're like, okay, well, does that? what does that mean? Especially for the sword guy. For me, I figured out that it, it probably means arrows, although that didn't always hold to be the case. Uh, but for him, it's like, what does that mean? Like, strokes? Yeah. Like, every time I swing it, is it one less number? Or what, what's going on here? Yeah, what is the so number So there's a little mean? confusion there. I wish it was a little bit more Or at least they sat explained. down and explained it, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, what other annoyances were there? There were some glitches where we didn't quite know where to go, and the little circle icon wouldn't show up unless you were exactly in the right place. Yeah. Or there were potions that we couldn't seem to get to. Or, or sometimes things that were supposed to happen don't, and now you're stuck in a level and you have to restart the level, like in that one oh, area where right. the drawbridge didn't lower. Right, where it um, didn't, because there was probably some enemy that got stuck somewhere in the right. geometry that we couldn't see. And, and so can't get to, and he didn't can't kill get him, us. it didn't spawn the new right. event. Uh, one of the other things that I really hated was the fact that if you want it bright, because oh, in the dark areas right. it's dark, but if you want it bright... Um, every time you respawn, you have to go to your menu, and it's already at the highest brightness that it can be, but you have to keep going just a little bit extra to make it that much brighter so that you can actually see where you're going. Yes, yeah, so, just one click, and that, you know, we were playing on projector, so it makes it extra, you know, problematic. Yeah. But yes, it resets, like, every checkpoint, or every time you die sometimes, or right. it just, it almost seems randomly, but there's probably a, a whatever, there's probably a time that it does it all the time, but yes, it would be like, hey, this dungeon is really dark. You want to, let's let's see if the gamma setting you know reset and it always has. Yeah, so. and it's all the way at the so just so if you look at it, it looks like it's all then, as high as it can go, back, back, back. but it can go just a little bit more, and everything gets brighter, and you're like, yeah. oh, this is much different. Yeah, so. it's super annoying that way. Uh, so that was the biggest annoyance, um, I but think, still I think not enough to no. I'm, it's still not enough to to ruin the game. Right. The only thing that came close to ruining the game is that playing as Alara uh, several times. I was not able to shoot my bow, yes. and that's a big problem. He had arrows. In fact, oh, yeah. he had one drawn, and he just couldn't fire. Yeah, I could not fire. Um, I don't know if this has happened with a lot of people. Maybe maybe we got lucky, and it didn't happen in the beginning of the game, and because so, that could really frustrate you. Yes. Because I basically had to rely on him to hopefully you know, kill all the guys off and survive, and then hopefully it would, like, you know, kick something into gear that would change so I could fire again. Right. Sometimes that didn't even happen. We had to literally, you know, even though he won, we had to, like, 
no, you not save, go back to the last checkpoint and, and re, redo, redo it. the whole thing, yeah. Um, but then other times it would pop in right after he killed the last guy or something like that. And it would be, I would move slowly. I mean, I could still run, but I would move slowly. So it's it's literally the character's animation while you're discussing things. You know, uh, I don't know, maybe Gears of War 2 has all those moments where he like talks on his thing and he can't move very fast. That's what I was stuck in. And yeah. so I couldn't shoot. I could aim, I could look. I could walk, but I was walking really slowly. And he couldn't, and he couldn't shoot. hack either, so if he pulled out his sword, and that should be noted that each oh. character has a ranged and a right, but melee, a, but... Alara, uh, she up, upgrades her ranged, and then he upgrades, Kadok upgrades his, his melee. His melee. Right. So there's no... There's there's very little upgrade in the other for the, you know... Yeah, so for the other, for she, the secondary She weapon. does find a sword every once in a while that helps her, but they're nowhere near as strong as Kadok's, and... Same with his crossbow, right? Which is kind of annoying. Uh, one thing that we didn't really realize uh, until the end is that some of the magic abilities are the same for them. Yes. So we didn't realize that Kadok had some projectile that he could throw. Yeah, and and um, I'm lightning so, balls and fire. Right. What what I found out was these these fire grenades. Kind of you have you have a, a set of magic set for him alone, and then you have a, a set of magic that he can use on both uh, for himself and for her. So yeah, if so I if I hold like down the charge, charge yeah, if I hold down the charge button and I shoot the lightning, the lightning will find his character Alara, and it will uh, grant her extra abilities. But what I didn't know is that if I just tap the button, uh, it, I can shoot out electricity, and I didn't I just didn't know that because yeah, and I probably I, have I'm the so same used to thing, holding but... down to charge the. the so I guess the, that brings up another interesting thing is that there was yeah. uh, usually a lot of times we complain in games that make us do things right right they make us use the grappling hook in this situation or they make us use this certain spell or whatever but in this case they never made us use that stuff so we didn't even know it was there yeah so there's kind of that you know which way would you go well i would have liked to know that i could have had you know uh, grenades i, I literally stumbled grenades, yeah. stumbled upon it at the very end because i was just upgrading all my arrow types because that was the most fun for me was the ranged attacks and i can you know i can zoom in when i have a long a strong bow and all that stuff um so yeah th i guess there sh should have been a little bit more you know more of a uh tutorial level or something that explains some of this stuff yeah. uh and then yes it is very dark sometimes it is very hard to see you've got a lot of like glittering points that distract you, and sometimes it, it actually shows that there's a wall or something you can interact with at some point, and then others not. Yeah. And then also, um, Kadic finds points that Alara needs to light on fire with her bow. You can catch bows on fire through a, like a bonfire or something, and vice versa for him. She'll she'll find points where he needs push to push. Oh, so that's annoying. yes, the the annoying part besides the button mashing for him is that they say the same thing. It's like. Put your, you know, see if you can push that, will you? You know, put your back into see it. See if you can light that on fire. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, exactly. Little girl. So it's like, our, you know, yeah. I, that's, it's but fine. It, it's yeah. fine to rely on somebody else to discover that, but. And one of the things that the developers were trying to do was refreshing. really make this uh, cooperative. And I think that they succeeded, although yeah. it was just kind of annoying the same things that they repeat. And, and the fact that I couldn't, like, do something before she had, um, noticed before, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, again, you can play this one player with AI, so right. um, maybe that's where a lot of the glitches came from, but then again, maybe it made it more of a, you know, streamlined thing, I don't know, I haven't played it right. through one player. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just wish they had more variety with the way that they had to interact. Right. Uh, but again, I had a lot of fun with this game, and I would... I would yeah, I did too. I thought think it was about a lot buying of fun. the next one. If know, they I'd make really, a next one, I think I would. I would. I would play. I would it with really you. look into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the voice actors because the the sound of Caddick kept on reminding me. I was like, I know that guy. Why do I know that guy? He's done a lot of video games and some other things. In fact, he's going to be in the Hobbit movies playing uh, Dw what's his name? Dwalin? Did I write that? Yeah, Dwalin. So he's going to be playing Dwalin in the in the in the Hobbit Our movies doors. upcoming. Uh, but he's also played Dante in Dante's Inferno, so that was interesting. Uh, and he's done a lot of other things. Uh, his name is is Graham McTavish. Now, Alora was played by Laura Bailey, who's done a lot of video games and a lot of uh, anime. Uh, most notice, most noticeably, she was in uh, Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball and some other animes. Um, but in addition, she also was a voice on Halo 4. She's done Resident Evil 6. She's done a lot of great stuff. And then Seraphine, I was surprised because I didn't realize, was Lucy Lawless. And if you don't know who Lucy Lawless is, then clearly you don't like women, uh, leather-clad women. 
well, giant ones. I I never liked. Is she Lisa giant? She's not that giant. Is no, she? she sure seemed giant. Yeah. I, I never liked that show. So. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's Xena Warrior Princess. I watched it. It was fun. I guess the last thing I want to say is that I really enjoyed the art direction. It's yes. gritty and real and kick ass. I mean, especially like. I, Whatever. I'm going to out myself, but uh, the elf lady. Yes. She's awesome. Yeah, well, I think, I think I like both the weapons. Girls, I think mostly. both girls were pretty good. I think some of the axe, I like, I like, axes that you had were stupid. When you when you upgrade your armor, that actually changes. So at one point, I had like these kind of like demon fang armor, and he had like this feathery thing, and then we we both got upgraded armor. Then like, it was kind of like obsidian looking. Yeah, kind it was, of thing, it was cool. I liked it. Yeah, so I like the art direction. I like the direction that it went. It's you know it's very Lord of the Rings orky kind yeah. of you know traditional kind of thing, but uh, it was just a lot of fun. I, I guess the gameplay was unique enough that you know it just. It, it stood out, even yeah. though the story was kind of throwaway. Well, I mean, the ending was kind of interesting. I did, I did like the ending, although there's once... alternate endings, and they're all like ten seconds. Though. Yeah, yeah, they're it's really kind short. Of ridiculous, but, but I yes. did, I did see where it was going, and I liked that direction. I just <laughs> wish that there was more. So. Let's just say I was the bad one. Okay. All right, guys. I think that's it. Um, please let us know if there are any games that you think have been, you know, misjudged or overlooked, and we'll check them out. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our great playlists. Uh, Game Lab has been a lot of fun. Yes, and please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, card games, art prints, short stories, and more. Really? Oh, See you guys. I missed it. Damn it, Why isn't it sticking? I hit it like three times. There you go. You were just too close to the I hit it like six times. Next on Do Review, it's the Pixar Shorts. What's my number one complaint uh, in the road rage department? There's one thing I say all the time. Cuck? <laughs> I don't know. What. No, no, no. Road rage. Road rage. When I'm driving. When you're driving? I said it this morning. No, oh, whatever. Stop singing? Inconsistent bastard. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about you. I mean, yes, you sing in the car. Okay. I hate it, but okay. we were talking about Buble, but no, no, Buble. no, inconsistency. It's when people are like, no, no, I'm not going to let you in, even though I have my blinker on. And then you go ahead and, you know, force your way in because of Seattle, you have to. And then they like back up and there's a huge gap between you and them. It's like, you inconsistent, you know, it's like, just let me in then. What's your problem? Why did whatever? Inconsistent bastard. It would be a very different world if, like, uh, your cars were indestructible or something. Ooh, yeah, well, like People bumper cars? People would totally be, like, bashing the hell out of each other. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I would do that. I'd do it for fun. I'd do it to my own car. <laughs> Beat the crap out of shit. Whiplash and stuff. Still waiting for the Street Fighters, uh, Street Fighter 2, right? That's the, that's the one where you get the car stage where you have to beat the crap out oh, of the car? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you destroy a car with your fists. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Your amazing shock <gasps> ability. <gasps> Blown gun. All right. Have you even tried though? Maybe you could do it now. What? You haven't even tried. Beating the shit out of a car? Yeah, we'll go to the junkyard and then I'll I'll, I'll video it. Well, I don't think it have like the same cool effects like where we're like after after well, you like don't know. thirty. I'll, I'll stand on the ground and like, throw parts. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I see a web video. It's happening. It's gonna happen. Buy our shirts. All the cool kids are doing it. You want to be cool, don't you? Seven. That would make me not buy it. You saying that right there. You want to be cool, don't you? Fuck you, no. And that's why you should buy a t-shirt. Because the fuck you, no kids are wearing it. Yeah. You can't look like a fool wearing one of these shirts. <laughs> it's designed so well. I oh, wear it. Thanks. I wear it to weddings. <laughs> In Exile Entertainment, published by Bethesda. See, I want to do that, but I feel like I'm... Not in the shop. I don't know. It just—it just—it's a matter of feelings. You—you you have always had more than half of the screen. To accommodate your ego. Well, you also—you also sit like this, which is weird. I, I Dude, don't know. I am always. Whenever I put something in between us, I have to move it towards me because the middle you're covering it. Well, you just sit so kind of enclosed. You're like—I don't know. I don't know how you sit like that. I have to sit like this. this is, so muscly. Well, no, it's just a matter of you know. I don't like. I don't like to sit like this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's all I got.